And then I remember. All right. Man, technology. All right, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't already have a calculator and something to take notes and practice with, go ahead and grab one um, because we're going to do the last bit of molar mass and that is mole atom conversions. Let's do it. That's the, that's the spirit. Let's do it. Bring it on. You always have a choice. No, it's just simple things. Use. Yeah. Um, use whatever calculator you are comfortable with, as long as it is not your phone. Yeah. Go ahead and put your phones away. You don't need your phones, and your phone's calculator stinks anyway. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Don't hit your head or anything. All right, so uh, last few days we've been doing mole gram conversions. We've been converting from mole to gram or from gram to mole. And how have we been doing that? What, what is the number we use to convert between a mole and a gram? Give you an, it has the initials MM. Molar mass. And where do we find the molar mass? On the periodic table. Good. So, uh, so we've been doing that. Now the last thing we need to do is convert between grams, which we cannot control, which we cannot, uh, which we can measure, and atoms, which we cannot. So I told you we were going to get to that point where we could convert between a gram, which we can measure, and an atom, which we can't, and that day is today. So we're going to convert between mole and atoms. And we remember that a mole is 6 times 10 to the 23rd things. It might be 6 times 23rd atoms, or it might be 6 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. The difference between the two is an atom is just an atom. Germanium, zinc, copper, yttrium, that's an atom. A molecule is more than one atom together. So H2O, NaCl, H2SO4, those are molecules. Cl2, that's a molecule. A specific number, it's just that in different Yeah. So again, the mole's like a dozen. And we've actually used it before, but now we're going to use it in, in a way that actually is, has some, some real teeth to it. Now the good news is, um, a lot of you have actually realized that if you work on this and you master this with two boxes, then you can master this. We've only done one box so far, today we are going to use two. And if you master two boxes, then six boxes is pretty easy okay, when you get there. It's like, no more! Yeah, you learn how to drive. You don't learn how to drive just one mile, you learn, once you learn how to drive, you can do it as long as you want. And that's how the T-chart works. So let's do it, let's jump right in. Okay, so we want to know how many atoms are in three moles of silver. And to do that, we're going to start with our T-chart, just like before. Start with our T-chart, just like before. And once again, nothing goes in this box. And in each box, there's three things. Three things in each box. And what are those three things? The number, the chemical, and the, and the unit. Excellent. Yeah. So three things in each box, the number, the unit, and the chemical. So the number we're starting with is 3.0. And the unit we're starting with is mole. And the chemical is ag. Three moles of ag. Three moles of ag. We want to know how many atoms of ag we have when we have three moles of ag. So just like we've done so far, and we've always done, what's the first thing we do once we set it up? We uh, transfer it over. Good, bring the unit down. So we're going to bring down mole silver and in this case, we don't care to get to grams of silver. What we want is atoms of silver. So we're going to convert to atoms of silver. And now we get to use our friend, the mole. The mole 
is 6 times 10 to the 23rd things per mole. So I'm just going to go ahead and write 6 times 10 to the 23rd things, and that's going to be 1 mole. I'm going to try to use two digits whenever possible. If you want to use 6.0, if it, if it rolls off your tongue better to say 6.0 times 10 to the 23rd, great. If it rolls off your tongue to say 6 times 10 to the 23rd, great. Doesn't matter. And that's going to be our math. So to get our answer, we're going to take 3.0 and we're going to multiply it by 6 times 10 to the 23rd and our answer is going to be in atoms of silver. And it is at this point where we must sharpen our tools. For reasons that I don't understand, Math teachers hate teaching exponential notation properly. They want to make it long and complicated. The problem with long and complicated is you don't realize when your calculator is giving you a bad number and your calculator can't do order of operations in you. The calculator does order of operations differently. It does it properly. So if you wanted to put in the mole, a lot of your math teachers teach you to do it this way. Six times 10 carat. 23. Recognize that? Yeah, that's bad. Don't do that. You all have a key on your calculator. It's either an E or an EE. -E. And if you have a non-TI, it might even be an exponent key. Most of the TI calculators is double E. In fact, on the yellow calculators, I circled it in silver. So it's really easy to find. On the TI 83s and 84s, it's second comma. Way to go, TI. Let's move it. Uh, let's move it. Every time we do we'll do different calculators, let's move it. And on the silver, it's second x to the negative one. I'm sorry, on the blues, it's second x to the negative one. So find your double E. This is how you use the double E. The double E means 10 to the whatever. It means times 10 to the whatever. So you don't have to do times double E. All you do is 6 E. 23. That's it. Four key presses. Well, five if you do the second. So this, the double E takes into account the times 10 to the whatever. Okay? So if you would, let's bang on our calculator together, multiply three times six double E two, three, enter. One point eight times ten to the twenty fourth. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now your calculator is going to return the proper number, which is one point eight times 10 to the 24. If you did it in your head, you're going to get 18 times 10 to the 23rd. Uh, both of these numbers are technically correct, but only one is in the proper form. And the proper form is one number, decimal point, whatever else, times 10 to the whatever. Okay. So this is the proper form of 1.8 times 10 to the 24th. 18 times the 23rd is technically correct, it's just not in the proper form. Okay? Question? You totally could when you multiply. You cannot when you divide. And because we're going to be dividing the mole a lot, if you do the caret thing, you have to put it in parentheses. So if you did it this way, you would have to put the whole thing in parentheses. And if you forget the parentheses, your calculator is going to do the order of operations properly, and you're going to get the wrong answer. Does that make sense? Because you know how calculators, order of operations, they, they do exponents first, then they multiply and divide. It's going to divide the exponent, and you actually might multiply when you should be dividing. Your calculator knows what it's doing, but you don't know how to put the numbers in properly. The EE takes all that complications out of the way. OK, other questions? Shall we do another? <laughs> all right, let's do another. 0 0.01 moles of copper. So using the system that you just learned, 
See if you can put a t-chart together and find out how many atoms are in 0 0.01 moles of copper. Remember to bring your unit down. Since you're starting with moles, make sure you bring your moles down to the bottom. I'm seeing a handful of people that have banged on their calculator and got an answer. So when you get an answer, lean over to your neighbor and see if she got an answer and see if your answers jive. So, you put your 0 0.01 moles of copper in, and then you realize that in every one mole of copper, you had 6 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper, and that returned uh, 6 times 10 to the 21st? Yeah. Give me a thumbs up if you got this answer. Okay. Good. Ready to move on? Okay, let's flip it around. And now, how many moles do you have if you have 2.4 times 10 to the 24th atoms of He? See if you can figure out how to set this guy up. Now we're going to start with he, atoms of He, and we want to get to moles of He. up top. You never start with a conversion, so put your 2.4 in your top box. The 2.4 times 10 to the 24th should go in the top box. Left. Top left, yeah. You never start with a conversion, so you're, you're always going to start with the thing that exercise gives you, and as a hint, it will always only have one unit. It won't be gram per mole or molecules per mole, it'll only have one unit, because there's only one unit to be, there's only one box for a unit. And remember, since your atom is up top, when you bring it out of the next box, your atom should be in the box below. Atoms are going to cancel out. So since your atom is your top left box, make sure your atom is also in your bottom right box. Conversion here is going to be one mole to six times to the twenty-third down here. So 
So mole, Adam's down here. So Adam's down here. Mole's up here. So six times 10 to the 23rd atoms oh. equals one mole. So once again, since you're starting with atoms in the upper left, you're going to have atoms in the lower right as well. Okay. Since you're starting with your atoms in your upper left, you're going to have atoms down here. These units are going to cancel out. If you're the kind of person who likes to cross things out, you can cross things out. And you're left with moles of helium. And you should have got a number that you can show me on your hands. Excellent. Yeah, four. Yay, I'm smart. Yes, you are. Let's all get smarter together. Yes. Do we need the point of Technically, yeah. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Here we go. Now, this is really where the rubber meets the road. We want to convert between things we cannot measure, atoms, and things we can measure, grams. And we're going to be doing this in the lab today and to, or tomorrow and Friday. We're going to be converting between grams and atoms. Now we have to use two boxes. We want to know how many atoms do we have in 350 grams of copper. Yep. Yes, we're going to do this together. Now, understand, and this is critically important, there is no shortcut between grams and atoms. It does not exist. Okay? There is no shortcut between grams and atoms. You can't convert from grams to atoms. You have to first get to moles. Moles is the tool that allows you to turn grams into atoms. So let's go ahead and make our T-chart. Our T-chart's going to have two boxes. We're going to start, or two conversions, we're going to start with 350 grams of copper. So everybody, can, everybody but Landon can see this, okay. You can always move over. So we're going to start with 350 grams of copper. Now. In the system we've always been using, we're going to move our grams of copper down. And we're going to need to get to moles. Why do we need to get to moles? Because we have to use moles to get to atoms. So we're going to convert grams of copper to moles of copper. And where do we find this conversion? Molar mass, good. So look at the periodic table. What's the molar mass of copper? 63.5. 63.5. Can I round it up to 64? Yeah, sure. All right. And, uh, oops, that's not right. It's on the bottom, silly buyers. Yeah. One mole of copper is 64 grams of copper. Am I done? No. Obviously not, because I have moles of copper, but I don't want moles. The exercise wants atoms. So I'm going to draw another box. I'm going to bring my unit down again. I'm going to bring down my moles of copper. And now I'm going to convert from my moles of copper to my atoms of copper. Let me draw that a little bit better. So what have we done? We've converted 
grams to atoms by going to moles first. So we go from grams to moles to atoms. Two boxes. As complicated as it gets in September. December and January, eh, a little bit more. So when you're banging into, this, banging the, into the calculator, it's 350 times 6 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 64. It's like an elaborate fraction. So it's 350 multiplied by 6 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 64. It doesn't matter. They're the same thing. But what's important is the 64 is in the denominator. You could do 350 divided by 64 multiplied by 6 times 10 to the 23rd. I don't recommend it though, because when we get to stoichiometry in January, you're going to want to multiply all the tops, divide by all the bottoms. So, so when you get the bottoms, would you, like, let's say you had another bottom, would you multiply those two and then, okay. Yeah. You can use whatever mechanism of algebra you prefer, um, okay. as long as you realize it's, it acts kind of like a big fraction. No, I, I did 350 divided by 64 first and got 5.5 and then okay. put it into the 6.10 and I got basically the same answer as the other way. Sounds good. So you can't do it that way? Absolutely. Algebra is... Very, very flexible. You can choose the whatever mechanism you want to use. So once you get an answer, lean over to your neighbor and see if she got the same answer you did. Are you assuming my gender? Okay, lean over to your neighbor and see if he, she, it, they got the same answer as Do you, do you agree with Herm? <laughs> do you have the same answer as Herm? Okay. All right, so 3.3 uh, 3 times 7 24th? Look good? Okay, we're gonna do one more together and then we're gonna do a work, practice worksheet. Before we do one more, are there any burning questions you have the courage to ask? Because you're multiplying it by. You don't need to do one times E, it's just one E. So, so what, okay, so to put the, the, the mole in, it's six E 23, nothing else. No multiplication times 7 to 23, it's just six E 23. The E means times 10 to the whatever. So, yeah, that's one of the pitfalls that comes up, guys. When you're learning how to use the E, you have to break your habit. Guys, you have to break your habit of wanting to do multiply, multiply by 10. It's just 6 E 23. Don't have to put any multiplication in there. The calculator knows E means times 10 to the whatever. Okay, other questions? All right, here we go. See if you can set this one all up by yourself. How many atoms and 127 grams of copper? It's the same basic setup. 